Welcome, Paul Turan. Thank hey. you so much for joining us. iPad 3 hitting the market today, isn't it? Launch of iPad 3? You can pre-order them now, but you're only going to be able to get one in a couple of days' time. But, you know, the signal most awaited corporate event, much excitement, uh, better quality screen, better processor, uh, better camera, you know, the usual. And um, Better everything. Better everything. People love these devices because they why, just work. Why buy you know? it now and not wait for another year? You know, well, it must it suck. Imagine you just bought an board. iPad 2 and now, you know, what are you going to do? You've got to be... Uh, behind the curve and it's only just come but initially in a fairly flat tape late in New York yeah. last night the stock was basically going nowhere but to be fair this is a company whose share price has risen from like four hundred dollars a share to five hundred and thirty or something you know in recent months so doing very well and it didn't fall or gain on the news but today I understand it's up marginally in a more positive environment so you know, just knocking those yeah. milestones off one after the other. And I know that you don't have it on your little list of notes that you always <laughs> give me every day so diligently. Uh, McDonald's disappointing, mm. Paul. Same store sales Asia disappointing. and in Europe. Come on, people. Why? Why? <laughs> you know, I know it's a new year and people have got resolutions and stuff, but I think it's disappointing people are not getting enough hamburgers. You not eat it. You don't eat shoot. at McDonald's, so don't. I'm a big McDonald's fan. No, you're not. I am too. I'm a big quarter pounder with cheese man, so I think... Uh, but this is not a good barometer for the, you know, the health of the global economy, Paul. <laughs> McDonald's not doing well in Asia. Who well, would have thought? Look, this is same store sales, so forget this is not, you know, earnings, this is not profits. This is kind of, you know, the extent to which sales are looking at one period or another. Let's see how the company does. It's done very well in terms of the share price trading around $100 a share. People liked it during the recession, but it turned out they were liking it as a growth stock in this environment too. So uh, we won't call it just yet. Okay, so Mario Draghi, um, the ECB president, <coughs> dismal yes. economic growth scenario down 0.5% to as much as growth of 0.3% for 2012 in the Eurozone. Mm. Dismal. Well, you know, the number now is 0.1. 0.1 is the latest ECB estimate for what the GDP growth of the Eurozone a 16 trillion US dollar economy will be for the year 2012. My prediction, by the time the end of the year comes, this is going to be a positive number. Why? Because a couple of months ago, they were saying we were going to see a big decline this year. Now we're back to flat. 2013, they're talking about a 1.1% growth number. You know, it's the same old, same old. The recession that was supposed to end all recessions, terrible life was about to start. Europe was finished. Forget about it. It's just an unusually deep recession, and the recovery is in hand. Okay, recovery is in hand. What about the oil <laughs> price sitting at $125 a barrel? That's a good price. <laughs> Demand destruction. I'm a Sassel shareholder. That's a good price. The higher, the better. So you don't care in terms of from, uh, from a... Um, no, I don't see it as a big drag on uh, the global economy. In these countries where fuel gets very expensive, they just drive less. You've been seeing in the US which people are driving thing, less, which is a good thing. Environment perspective. It's good for the owls and the trees. People must drive less. <laughs> Iran also, I mean, this is where Iran is in the middle of all this because this was the reason that we've mm. got a much higher brand crude price. Supply yes, I thought I would just touch on this again because it's one of the most pressing issues in sort of global economics at the moment is whether or not there's going to be some kind of conflagration up there. My own view, having watched very closely all the comments around Netanyahu's visit, the comments coming out of the Middle East generally, the dynamics with the Russians and so on, is that this thing is not going to happen. In other words, there's going to be a lot of saber rattling. But I think people who are positioning themselves in terms of their equity investments, because they think that Israel is going to drop some heavy munitions on Tehran, I think that would be a mistake. Because some people like to assume that terrible things are going to happen. But I think based on the facts, it's better to assume under the current circumstances it's not going to happen.